This is a video about uh, Mormon history and Mormon attractions. Uh, I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes over photographs that I've taken in the last few years at different Mormon historical sites uh, in Missouri, Illinois, and Utah. Now, I may make some mistakes. I'm just talking off the top of my head. So here we go. Uh, Independence, Missouri. I visited in September of 2011. This is the famous uh, site of the, the New Zion, the uh, with future coming of Christ, according to Joseph Smith. We have the temple site. Uh, there it tells it all. And you can visit the temple lot, uh, which is about a two-acre site. The temple lot is owned by the Church of Christ, not the Utah Mormons, not the RLDS, owned by the Church of Christ. Uh, this is the temple lot right here. You can take a walk out on there. Uh, and experience standing on the site of New Zion. The Church of Christ has a small church in one corner of the lot. Uh, you can also visit a small visitor center maintained by the Church of Christ. Uh, and you can uh, walk around the temple lot. Uh, they have a number of, of markers or monuments uh, at the, the site of the future temple that is to be built at the unspecified point in the future. Uh, here's a monument that is right in front of the visitor center. And what else? We've got some other uh, monuments here uh, marking the different points of where the temple is to be built at some future time. There never has been a temple here. It was just laid out by Joseph Smith and not built. Across the street from the temple lot, the uh, Community of Christ has built their temple. It's a beautiful building. You can go inside and take tours. Uh, no photography is allowed, so I couldn't take any pictures inside, but it's well worth seeing. The Community of Christ used to be called the RLDS, the Reformed Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And um, this is a photo of the outside of the, uh, of the temple. And they also uh, have a famous auditorium. The uh, Community of Christ Auditorium was built in the 20th century. They don't have tours of the auditorium. But you can walk around the auditorium and photograph it. Uh, this is looking from the temple lot uh, across the street to the uh, Community of Christ Auditorium. Um, I liked the R old RLDS temple seal. And I took a number of pictures of the seal on some of the older RLDS slash Community of Christ structures that I saw uh, on my travels. We have the old stone church also in the area. This was um, a church from the 19th century built by the RLDS. Uh, it's just across the street from the temple lot. Uh, the church was not open the day I was there. I was here on a weekday in the morning. Uh, I couldn't get inside, but it's a beautiful building. And uh, like I say, dates back to the 19th century. You have a lot of uh, interesting things here to see in independence uh, regarding Mormon history. Uh, it's, there's a lot of stuff to see just in a small, you know, two or three square block area uh, between the Church of Christ, the RLDS, and the LDS. Now, the Utah Mormons, or LDS, I'll call them, have a visitor center. You can see it there on the left. Uh, and you can go in their visitor center. It's similar to many other LDS visitor centers I've been in. And you can take a tour. And, uh, you know, they'll give you a presentation, you can watch a movie, et cetera, et cetera. Well, there we have Independence. Now we're going to move on to Liberty and Far West, which are not too far from uh, the Independence area. Liberty is about maybe 20 miles north. Uh, we have the historic Liberty Jail to see in Liberty. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to go in the jail. I, I got up too early. I got there about 8 in the morning, and the jail didn't open until 9. And I just didn't want to wait around because I was driving from Kansas City to Nauvoo in one day. It's kind of a long drive, a couple hundred miles, 250, I guess. So I took some pictures of the Liberty Jail. Unfortunately, I did not get inside the Liberty Jail. So I moved on about 20 or 30 miles north to Far West. Now, Far West is very interesting. It used to be a town of about 5,000 people. This is what it looks like today. Uh, there are basically two places to visit. We have the Far West Temple site, which is uh, maintained by the LDS Church. There was never a temple at Far West. It, it was only a, a temple site that was dedicated by Joseph Smith. The temple was never built. Uh, but you can visit the site. There's a small parking lot in the front. You can walk around the temple site. There's cornerstones at all four corners. And then there's a large monument in what would have been the front of the temple 
This is the large monument here that talks about Far West. It talks about the saints uh, in Far West and some of the prophecy. Uh, I was here in the morning uh, on a weekday, and there was nobody there. I mean, I was the only person there. It was very peaceful. I walked around and took some photos and, uh, and checked it out. Uh, across the street, the Community of Christ has an exhibit. And they have uh, uh, a plaque here where they're talking about Far West. And they have a church. Uh, it's actually a functioning church. They have services. Uh, it was not open when I was there. But uh, you can walk around the church and take pictures. And it's really a nice area. It's very peaceful. There's not a lot of activity in Far West. It's, it's off the beaten path. It's not on the main highway. Uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's one of the Church of Christ, uh, a Church of um, Community of Christ Church's seals. So Far West is definitely worth visiting. Uh, this is a Community of Christ uh, uh, exhibit here that talks about um, you know, what the town looked like when there were 5,000 people living there, which would have been in 1838. Well, now we move on to Nauvoo. And Nauvoo, in my opinion, is, is the crown jewel of, of any, any Mormon tourism. You know, as far as, you know, the best place to go to see Mormon stuff, Nauvoo is, is, is pretty good. I mean, it's one of the top ones. Uh, there are two main areas to visit. One is an area that's owned by the Community of Christ and one by the LDS. So you go to the Community of Christ Visitor Center and they'll take you on a tour uh, to visit some of the more important structures. This is called the Nauvoo House Hotel. It was built as a hotel uh, and all these buildings were built in the late 1830s, early 1840s when the Mormons were in uh, Nauvoo. Uh, so this was a, the Nauvoo House Hotel. It was used for different things over the years. Uh, the Mormons were basically in Nauvoo from about 1839 to 1846, I believe. This was the last home that Joseph Smith lived in. You can go in and take a tour uh, of that home. And this is the red brick store. Uh, There's a re, uh, reconstruction of Joseph Smith's red brick store. Uh, it's also part of the tour. You can go in there. And it's a, uh, you can see what the, the store would have looked like in the 1840s. Uh, that's the outside of it, and we'll see the inside of it here in just a moment. Uh, you can uh, you can shop for some souvenirs, a lot of different items there you can purchase. The prices are all very reasonable, uh, and most of the things that you do in Nauvoo are they're, they're all free anyway. So Nauvoo is a really a really cheap day as far as you know going touring. Uh, upstairs in the Red Brick store, this was a very famous meeting room. And you can go up here and then they'll give you a, a presentation on uh, some of the important things that happened at that time uh, in the meeting room. This is called the Homestead House, another house that Joseph uh, Smith lived in when he lived in Nauvoo. I think this was the first house that he lived in. Now, the, the crown jewel of, of the Community of Christ properties is the Smith Family Cemetery. This is where Joseph Smith is buried, uh, Hiram uh, is buried and his wife Emma and they're all buried in this one monument you can see right here uh, you'll get a close-up of it here in a minute uh, so this is the burial spot of Joseph Hiram and Emma uh, and at one time the graves were not marked uh, they were actually hidden for many many years and then uh, I think in the 1920s the graves were discovered and and the bodies were in disinterred and then they were buried properly uh, in this monument. This is a small little cemetery. It overlooks the Mississippi. It's very peaceful. Uh, there are other family members also buried in the cemetery. Not a whole lot of people, but there are maybe a couple of dozen people, I would say, buried in this cemetery. And like I say, all of this is free. You can just, you can go on the tour and they'll take you through here. Or even if you don't want to take the tour, you can just drive around uh, the streets of Nauvoo and park and walk into the cemetery. Uh, as you can see, when I was there, there were very few people. Um, I was there September 21st of 2011, and it was a beautiful day. Uh, you could see the Mississippi very well from the cemetery. These are the graves of uh, Joseph Smith's parents, uh, Joseph Smith Sr. and Lucy Mack Smith. They're also right there in that cemetery. And, uh, yeah, so the Smith Family Cemetery is definitely uh, a... a um, a highlight of, of any visit to Nauvoo. You can't miss that. Now I moved over to the LDS side of Nauvoo and uh, they have a visitor center 
with some interesting exhibits. And then you take what these wagon rides. You take a wagon ride around Nauvoo. It's free. Uh, and most of these buildings have been reconstructed. They're, the, they're based on the original uh, uh, buildings, but they've been rebuilt in the 20th century. This was Brigham Young's home. Uh, and you can go into these these homes too. Uh, they're not just uh, you know empty buildings. They're decorated in their period furnishings. Uh, those ladies there are docents, and they'll take you through uh, through that home. That was Brigham Young's home. What you do is you take the wagon ride, and it takes you all around the Nauvoo uh, uh, area and see all these historical buildings. Then you just go back, and you can drive around uh, the same area and park and walk into the homes and these different businesses that have been been uh, reconstructed. Uh, that's a famous one, the gunsmith. You go in there and there's a lot of, a lot of guns uh, from the period. And uh, here's Wilfred Woodruff's home. You know, I think Wilfred Woodruff is my favorite uh, LDS president. He was the fourth president of the church. Uh, so I visited his home. Um, the, the homes are very tastefully decorated. They're very well restored. And you should go in at least the three or four of these homes and, and you know, just take a look. This is the 70s hall, which was a meeting hall. And that one is also open. You can go into the 70s hall. Now, this is down at the end of Parley Street, uh, where the saints uh, made their exodus from Nauvoo. And you can go down to the river and you can see uh, the spot where they all crossed the Mississippi River and they, uh, they exited over to uh, Iowa. That's a statue called Eyes Westward with Brigham Young and Joseph Smith. Now, this is the, the current Nauvoo Temple. It's only about 10 years old. Uh, it was built uh, as an exact copy of the original Nauvoo Temple that was destroyed in the 1840s. Uh, and th this is the statue here in the front of uh, Joseph and uh, Hiram. Uh, it's recreating the moment when they left Nauvoo and went to Carthage where they were, were murdered. Uh, now, I couldn't get in the temple because I'm not a member of the LDS faith. I don't have a temple recommended card. Uh, so I didn't get inside, but it's a beautiful building. And like I say, it's only about 10 years old. Uh, it's not that large. The exterior is a faithful reproduction of the original, but the interior is, is completely different. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, there's some lettering on the front of the temple. It's a beautiful building, and it's very well kept up. It really, it really shines. It, like they, it, it seems like they go and they must scrub the walls on the outside because it's just so shiny, so bright. This is uh, the little Nauvoo town, the actual town of Nauvoo. It, you can see it's pretty old. And they have, a, you know, souvenir shops and restaurants. And this is a famous hotel called the Hotel Nauvoo. Uh, I didn't stay here, but a lot of people who come to Nauvoo do stay in this hotel. So it's worth walking around downtown Nauvoo. Now on to Carthage. Carthage, of course, is the, the place where the martyrdom occurred, mar the martyrdom of Joseph and Hiram Smith. And there is a... Um, a visitor center on the right you can see in this photo and on the left is the restored Carthage jail and as you walk from the parking lot you get closer to the buildings and you see the statue in the middle here which is a statue of Joseph and Hiram Smith um, which is right in front of the uh, the restored jail so you can go into the visitor center and look at some exhibits and then they will take you on a tour of the jail and they'll take you in all the rooms, including the martyrdom room. You can take photos, and they'll give you an informative uh, tour about uh, what happened in, in the Carthage jail. This is the, the, the window at the top there is the martyrdom window. That's the window that Joseph Smith uh, jumped out of or fell out of, depending on what version of the story you believe. And this is the interior of the martyrdom room. That's the window from the inside. Uh, and it's very tastefully uh, uh, restored. They have some period uh, furnishings in the room. And like I say, they will let you take as many pictures as you want. They give you a presentation, and you can walk around the martyrdom room and, and take photographs, and you can ask questions. Uh, the tour lasts about maybe 30 to 35 minutes, and you go in just about every room in the jail, and, and you get a, uh, 
um, a narrative of, of the events that took place uh, when Joseph and Hiram were, uh, were murdered. Uh, there's one of the original doors with a bullet hole in it. So the the jail is not a reconstruction. The the building was never torn down, but it was it was renovated. Well, I also put in some pictures of my trip to Utah in 2008, and I visited uh, some famous LDS spots in Utah. This is uh, Temple Square, the North Visitor Center in Temple Square. You can take tours of Temple Square off the uh, off the Visitor Center. Uh, this is the famous Christus statue in the North Visitor Center, which uh, it's a very famous image that uh, many of you may have seen. Uh, and then you walk around the Temple Square. This is the Assembly Hall. Uh, most of these buildings date back to the 19th century. This is one of the first buildings that was built, I think, on Temple Square. It's still used. Uh, they have concerts in there. Uh, there's a seagull monument. In the front, on the uh, in the front of the uh, of the assembly hall, this is a picture uh, of the interior of the assembly hall. Uh, I was on a tour; and they take you in there and just kind of show you around. And uh, this is the famous Mormon uh, Tabernacle, which was built in the 19th century, where the Mormon Tabernacle Choir hold their concerts. Their Sunday morning concerts are held in here, and I did go to one of them. You'll see here in just a moment some pictures of the interior of the uh, tabernacle. This was taken uh, on a Sunday morning before the concert started. And I got there early because I wanted to get over there in the corner on the upper level, uh, right there, where you have a pretty good view of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And the concert lasts for about uh, 30 to 40 minutes. It's a 30 to 40 minute broadcast. Uh, the organ, of course, is a very, very famous organ. I can't remember all the details about the organ, but it's it's a, one of the most famous organs in the country. Uh, also on Temple Square, of course, the most famous building is the Salt Lake Temple, and there it is. It was built over a period of 40 years. Uh, it was dedicated, I believe, in 1893 or 1894, and it's it may be the most uh, impressive temple of all the Mormon temples. Uh, it's really, really a classic building. Uh, it's one of the. It's a classic architectural piece, uh, and again, I couldn't get inside of it, but you can walk around and photograph it as much as you want. Uh, this is a plaque or a uh, uh, some wording that's uh, etched into the uh, temple facade. Uh, the building you see there at the end is the new conference center. About 10 years ago, a new conference center was built because the existing structures weren't large enough to hold all the people that would come for the general conferences. So uh, you can take a tour of the conference center. It seats about 18 to 20,000 people. There you can see the interior of the conference center. Uh, and the tour lasts about 30 minutes. And you go around inside there. It's very interesting. Then they take you up to the roof. And you can look back on Temple Square. There's the Salt Lake Temple. The small building underneath there is the Temple Annex, where you, the people go in and, and change clothes, I think. Uh, this is the um, Joseph Smith Memorial Building. It used to be the Hotel Utah. And there are some exhibits in there, and you can see a movie in there. Uh, from the top of the administration building, you can get a beautiful view of all of Temple Square. And there are all the most famous buildings uh, in Temple Square. Uh, across the street from Temple Square, you have a couple of other buildings. This is the Church History Museum, which you could easily spend a couple of hours uh, in there uh, seeing stuff and uh, the Family History Library which people come from all over the world to research genealogy although now you can do pretty much all of it on the internet I think this is uh, Brigham Young's home it's called the um, Beehive House and you can take a tour of that I did take a tour of the Beehive House it was interesting a few blocks away is the Brigham Young Cemetery where Brig Brigham Young is buried down there in the corner on the left, and you'll see right here the grave of Brigham Young. Uh, he has his own cemetery, and some of his other relatives are buried in that cemetery. But most of the uh, church presidents are buried in the city cemetery in Salt Lake City. If you go out to the Salt Lake City City Cemetery, you can see there's Gordon Hinckley's uh, uh, grave, and you can see all a lot, quite a few of the others. President John Taylor, the third president of the church. Some of these monuments are very interesting. You can see right here a Wilfred Woodruff coming up. 
uh, and it lists uh, five of his wives right there on the uh, the headstone. Now you don't see too many references to plural marriage. That's one of the few you're ever going to see. Uh, Joseph Smith, uh, Joseph F. Smith, which who was I believe the sixth president of the church. Uh, there's his headstone, and what else we got? Joseph Fielding Smith was much later in the 1970s was also he was the 10th president of the uh, LDS church so if you can, if you're interested in that type of thing you go to the uh, city cemetery and you can take a little trail of the prophets uh, uh, tour and uh, and see all the headstones <clears throat> well I took a little trip up to some other cities uh, Brigham City which is about 50 miles north of uh, Salt Lake I went up here on a cold morning and I wanted to see the grave of Lorenzo Snow who's the fifth president of the church. I, I've always liked Lorenzo Snow. I'm not sure why. Maybe he has a nice beard. Uh, his, his grave marker is the, uh, the tall monument you can see in the back, a little to the left of center. Uh, that's a nice picture there. It was taken uh, in the morning when it, it just snowed. And that's the, um, that's the tabernacle in uh, Brigham City. That's the Brigham City Tabernacle. I didn't get inside there, but it's a very interesting old building. And there's the Tabernacle in Logan, which was the next stop on my on my uh, uh, tour that day. Uh, the Logan Tabernacle, and there's the Logan Temple, which is one of the four temples built in the 19th century. Uh, the others being the Manti, uh, St. George, and Salt Lake Temples. Uh, this is a real classic old structure. It goes back to the 19th century. And that is the Logan Temple right there. So I went up to Logan just to see that. And on the way back, I took a picture of the Ogden Temple, which was a much more recent temple built in the 1970s. And um, I got a couple more other pictures in here. Here's the Provo Temple, which is similar looking to the Ogden Temple, but it has a much more beautiful setting with the mountains in the background. And then uh, here we got the Jordan River Temple, which is also in Greater Salt Lake. Well, that's about it. Oh my God, 22 minutes. I hope I didn't make too many mistakes. I hope uh, you enjoyed this. I, if you're interested in visiting Mormon historical sites, I, uh, I hope it helped you out. So that's it from here, and um, thanks for watching.